honored to be greeted with love and devotion. Good morning, Daughter Lodge family and friends. I am Frank D. Dr. George II, your MC for this morning's program. We will now begin with the posting of our colors by the UAPB ROTC Guard, followed by a meditation from Mr. Eric Williamson and a welcome from Ms. Sierra Ford. We ask that you refrain from all recording during this program. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. Thank you. for today is titled, Our Deep Sphere, by Marianne Williams. It reads, Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure about you. We were born to manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not in some of us. It is in every one of us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Thank you. Every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. Quoted by Harriet Tubman. Good morning to Chancellor Alexander, our special guest, Kirk Franklin, deans, faculty, staff, alumni, students, and the community. I am Kira Ford, a graduating senior at this great institution majoring in agriculture and business. And it's my great pleasure to welcome each of you to the first 41st year of the Youth Motivation Task Force. YMTF is a program at our university designed to motivate, encourage, and reinforce the value of education, its relevance to selecting the careers that students desire. This year's emphasis was placed on the four C's, character, consequences, choices, and commitment. I charge every one of you to keep these concepts in mind and take heed to the great information you were here today. And again, you are welcome. Thank you. It is always a pleasure to be around success-driven peers. With that being said, Eric and Kira, I thank you for those words. We will now have a selection from our very own Best Require. Following the choir, Mr. Peyton Parker, who is our Student Government Association Vice President, will introduce our distinguished speaker. Thank you.
Good morning, UAPB. You can do better than that. Good morning, UAPB. Good morning. Not only to UAPB, but to the Pine Bluff community, um, other esteemed guests and friends, Chancellor Alexander, and our speaker, Kirk Franklin. I'm so elated to stand before you this morning, and I'm humbled and excited to introduce our speaker today. Kirk Franklin is best known for his work in the contemporary gospel arena, where he has obtained extraordinary success. He has won numerous awards and received an abundance of other accolades and honors. We are also familiar with Kirk as the host of BET's Sunday Best, and he is also a New York Times best-selling author. What makes Kirk Franklin great to me, outside of his music, is that he is a living testimony of how the Lord will elevate and greatly use those who follow after him. Kirk is not ashamed of his humble beginnings, and he's opened up about the trials he's overcome as a child to grow into the man he is today. Furthermore, for those of us born in the 90s, we have greatly enjoyed and connected to his music as he pioneered bridging the gap and uniting audiences across gospel, hip hop, pop, and R&B. Now, following a selection of our marching band, M4, the next voice you will hear will be that of none other than Mr. Kirk Franklin. Department do do they have him for school because 
uh, listening to the band, listening to the choir, everything is at such a high level of excellence. Such a high level. Choir, uh, choir, you were phenomenal. extremely blown away by, by just a level of kindness that you've shown me and uh, uh, just your welcome experience so far just with the incredible just 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 the singing and the musicality of this this incredible university. I, I, I mean you've been just kind on so many levels. You even had somebody introduce me that was my height and you know, was, uh, and those things are very special to me. So I want you to know that I'm very, very thankful and feel very humbled to be here with you this morning. I, uh, two weeks ago, I spoke at Dillard University and I've uh, had the opportunity, surprisingly, to speak at many, 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 many institutions of higher learning across the country. Uh, I've been really blessed to speak at, a, at several HBCUs and, and other schools like Syracuse, Butler, Pepperdine, uh, University of Dayton, uh, uh, Baylor University, and I, I want you to know that that for me, uh, to be very transparent with you, and um, I had a learning disorder when I was a kid back in the back in the eighties. We didn't know what ADHD was, and I struggled a lot in school, uh, and and found myself really pulled into the arts, but really struggled academically. When I when I entered high school, I got into a lot of trouble. I failed out of high school. I became a young father in high school, dropped out of school. Uh, there was a community college in the city that uh, was willing to allow me to go there and to get my GED. I started going there and, and my mother died my, uh, my first year there. And so I really kind of got really lost in my way. And, and now that I'm married with children, I understand the value and the importance of really embracing the value of education so that I can be the type of father that can be able to be uh, involved and engaged in the learning process of my children. So I need to let you know that, that, uh, that, 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 that what you are doing here has, has eternal value when it comes to making your education a priority. I understand that it may not always necessarily feel that way, and it may not necessarily be viewed that way, but I would do anything to go back and to embrace uh, the sacrifice that I know that it takes for you to do what it is that you're doing, and the pull of the culture to devalue education and to make everything look and feel so quick and to make uh, uh, certain values that don't have anything to do with long, hard work and make everything that you have look so microwavable. But I want you to know that there's nothing microwavable about character. There's nothing microwavable about all the other seeds that you're talking about that is your theme. My uh, start of the year was very interesting because my seeds at the end of the year was courage, contentment, and character. And that was my list for 2014 for Kirk Franklin. Courage, contentment, and character. But I need to let you know that, 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 that those plans that we have and those, those views that we see and these goals that we have, whatever your C's are, what, whatever they are, you have to understand that you're not doing it alone, that you're not trying to approach it alone, that the goal to get there is not by yourself, that Wherever you are in your walk and in your faith, and wherever you are and what you've embraced to understand to be your faith, I, as a person who has professed in his own walk to be a believer of, of uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I have, I have been one to embrace the uh, path of understanding that Jeremiah said to us that I know the plans that I have for you, God says, and it's the plans to prosper you and to give you a hope and to give you a future. So, 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 so you have to understand that there are plans, and those plans are to give you a hope, and those plans are to give you a future, and 
and those plans were written before you even took your first breath, but here's the, here's the challenge that some of you are feeling like I sometimes feel, and I'm quite sure that everyone, no matter your age, no matter where you are in your walk, you feel this at times that you see the plan, but the plan and how to execute it and the reality of something tangible seems so, 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 so far away. That you become discouraged and, 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 and from the dream and the reality of the dream. Because uh, on that destination, there are detours and there are delays. I remember being on a flight to New York City and I was on my way to New York City and we got on a plane that had us stuck on the ground for seven hours. Seven hours on a plane and they did not let us off the plane. You can imagine that being on a plane for seven hours with people can become very frustrating. Not only did they get frustrated, they got really stinky. It got hot and it was long. And what was very frustrating is that the pilot never got on the intercom to inform us of what the delay was. So we were stuck without information. We were frustrated without revelation. And we were tired because we could not see our destination. And here's the challenge. The challenge is that when you are stuck, it is so easy to feel like you are the only one stuck. And you're frustrated. You forget that there are hundreds of other passengers on this plane that feel the same way you feel. Now, because we were stuck, I finally called my boy that was already in New York. I called him. I said, man, what is going on that New York? Are y'all having like a... I don't believe when something happened to him. We stuck on the ground for seven hours. He said, dude, he said, the weather here is beautiful. And so really, you know, now I become really, really, really frustrated to figure out what was going on. So finally, when the pilot came on the intercom, he explained to us that between Texas and New York, there was a storm. So the storm was not in New York. The storm was in the middle of where I was trying to go. There was a problem in the air that was separating me from my destination. Now, 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 here's the problem. Here's the problem with that. The problem with that is that the storm allowed other planes to be circling in the air. So my delay was really for my protection. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. It was really there to protect me from running into somebody else that was occupying my space. So, 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 when I got clarity, it gave me more patience to realize that really my frustration really was, 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 was there because of lack of information. And, and, and so when I got full on, when I got the full information, I understood that it was really protection that was keeping me back. But then the beauty was that when I got to my destination, I still arrived on time. So here's the dilemma that we sometimes have. Sometimes we think that we're going to miss our moment. Sometimes we think we're going to miss our opportunity. And what we have to realize is that there is a process of character development because there are places that only your character can take you that you get a can. But, 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 but the challenge is, is that that's your choice. No one can force in you character. No one can implant in you when you need to have something internal that makes you the man that you are. You know, when, 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 I, when, I, when, when I was single before I married Tammy, my problem was I couldn't cook. I was a hot mess in the kitchen and I couldn't cook it. So what I would do is I get this microwave for dinners because I was a bachelor, you know, and, you know so that's how you eat. You, you know, you try to hook you up for a microwave for dinner. Yeah, so, but the problem with microwave for dinners is that no matter how long you put them in there, you take a fork and you can stick it in the middle and it was still cold in the middle. And no matter what I tried to do, I, I had a hard time getting that coldness out of the middle because it was microwavable. But you know what made grandmama's Sunday cook it so good? Watch this. Grandma didn't start cooking on Sunday. Grandma started cooking Saturday night. I wish I had some grandmama's in the so, so, so what would happen is, is that while you were in church, while you were sitting in bed or whatever you were doing on Sunday, what mama was, was grandma was prepared started Saturday night, and it was simmering all night. And it was simmering all morning. So when you got out of church, you know, you know, shook hands, and, you know, the pastor gave about 15 offerings, and, you know, trying to make you say, you know, and all of a sudden, so by the time you got home, 
what you benefited from is not something that happened quickly. You benefited from something that went through a process. Now, when you walk across the stage, the challenge is that wherever you go, will they benefit from character that went through the process? Or will your job, will your career, will the building that you start, will the company that you develop, will they stick you and in the middle you still be cold? And no one can make that choice for you. Because from here to the dream, there are detours and there are delays. And what you do in the middle, no one can force you. And so that's why you have to understand that the biggest challenge between the, the, the dream and the destiny, a lot of times, is deception. It is deception. Some of you ladies, some of you know good young ladies all about deception. Some of you have been in the mall. You've been at the food court. You've been sitting at the food court. And you see a boy. And from a distance. I'm sorry. What I do is I'm saying, hey. <laughs> and so that's it, that's a boy. It's like, oh, don't go out now, don't go out now. But some of you young ladies have been at the mall. You see a young man at a distance. And when you see this young man at a distance, you would go for the sand and from the distance, he's fine. <laughs> from the distance, he looks like you just help him. We know it's another five man, ladies with us. Boris. You know, he's, he's fine, he's good looking, he's, you know, he's six, what, he's six, two, you know, nice looking young man, right? Right? Right, tall, good looking. And then, then, then he happens to look at you. Woo! Woo! He looks at you, he gives you that Ella Puche, you know. And he's saying, you girl, girl, you're looking at me, girl, you're looking at me. And then when I lose, you know, it's 
Bush. You know, you know, it's that whole other thing. And so I don't like the bipolar this <laughs> So a lot of times I don't go. And when I do go, I have a bad attitude sometimes, you know, because I'm just messed up. Well, anyway, there's an award show called the American Music Awards. And I went to the American Music Awards and I went late because I didn't want to do this thing called the red carpet. If you've ever seen the award show, you know there's a red carpet. It goes from the back of the building all the way to the back of the building to the end of the building. It's a red carpet. And the one side of the red carpet is paparazzi. It's a lot of press people with cameras. Cameras all the way. So from the red carpet all the way down, it's like camera people all the way. And they're taking pictures of you as you come down the red carpet. Well, I hate that. I know that most mainstream award shows are a gospel artist. Most people don't know who I am. And so for my own pride, I don't like to go. And so I happened to go to one award show and I went late. This Mercury is where I went late, opened the red carpet from the old man to my seat. Well, I got there late, but it was still late, so I was in time. I get out of my car. As soon as I get out of my car, the first person I run into was Beyonce and her entourage. She's from Houston, I'm from Dallas, so you know, the relationship. Oh, God, how you been asking me to get from? No good, no good, Miss Beyonce, no good. Good to see her. And she had a whole entourage. She had about 50 people in it just to carry her hair. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so, so, so there's like a holding tent. And so, and so I'm following her to a part of this little holding tent where we go to red carpet. And so I'm in front of Beyonce. Beyonce's whole entourage. It's just me and one person. It's me and my publicist. That's all it is. Me and my publicist, Beyonce behind me. And in front of me, there's a big pop group from the 90s, some of you remember. It's a group called Duran Duran. I don't know if some of you remember, but in the 90s of the 80s, they were one of the biggest pop groups on the planet. Well, this was their reunion uh, concert event. So they were coming together for their reunion at the American Music Awards. So it's Duran Duran, it's Beyonce, it's me. <laughs> the guy in front of us who's in control says, okay, now when I call your name, when I say go, I want you to leave under the tent, turn to your right, and paparazzi will take your picture, okay? So when I say go, come up under the tent, turn, and the paparazzi will be right there. Do you guys remember the movie called Hall of Nights? <laughs> Some of you too young. It's the movie with Arsenia Hall and Eddie Murphy. It's got Della Reese in it. Okay, you remember the shooting scene? Where they were following, they were chasing Eddie Murphy and Arsenia Hall had people with them with big guns, and there was one little guy had a little gun. You remember that? Just keep that in mind. So the man says, Go! And so we go out, and the purple person sees Duran Duran. They go, Duran Duran! And then they see Beyonce. They go, Beyonce! So if you want to be like me, I want you to 
feel what it feels to be with me. Now, 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 watch this. Now, that's something I could have easily said no. You know, I mean, I have to be obedient to that. But if I would have, I would have missed the opportunity to grow. How many opportunities have we had in our lives when we were put in an uncomfortable position, but because it was uncomfortable, we walked away from it and missed opportunities to grow in our character? How many family members have we said no to because they get on our nerves? How many people at our jobs have been taken out to? How many students do you stay late and walk life with because they need somebody to help them walk through life? But because you got something to do, you miss that opportunity to help somebody make it. You must be willing to do the work that nobody else wants to do. Because that's the only way that you become the inner person that is stronger than the gift. Because I promise you, you do not want to go anywhere where the blessing crosses you because your character was not ready. My uh, son is a uh, very special, he's 13 years old. And uh, he gave me a very understanding of why I believe for me to be the man that I want to be. Why, why God is so important? Because God gives me a level of, of vision that I would want to have. Me and my son went to the movies, and we got there a little late, and so they ran out of 3D glasses. And it was opening night of the big 3D movies. And so they had one pair of 3D glasses out. And so, you know, Trippin' Little Daddy, I gave those to my son. And so we're in the movie, it's opening night. I'm the only one in the movie with no 3D glasses. So my little 13 year old by the time he was 10, he was 10. And so it's saying in the movie, movie stars, everybody in the movie is doing this. Whoa! I'm like, what's happening? What's, what's going on? And, and my son said, Dad, shut up. <laughs> Something else happens in the movie. Oh! I'm like, man, son, what, what, what's happening? He's like, I'm gonna tell you one more time. And so the whole movie, everybody's, ooh, wow. And I'm sitting a little bit like that. Because I can't enjoy any of it because the movie was made with 3D glasses. So because I had my glasses on, I couldn't enjoy the movie. That's how God created life. He created life that the only way you can enjoy it is when you see it through his lens. That's the only way, that's the only way, that's the only way that all of this craziness can make sense. That's the only way that when you stand up late at night and your stomach hurt because you got no money and you're tired and you're frustrated and you want to quit, the only way you can hang in there is when you see life through his lens, when you got friends that are giving up, you do this, whoa! And I'm like, what are you doing? It's like, because I know that all things are working together. Whoa! Why don't you quit? Because I can see that you can lay in door for a night, but joy coming in the morning. Everybody else fight you. Whoa! You're like, why are you chilling? There's no weapon form again. And you can only have that perspective. Listen, listen. You can only have that perspective when you see through his lens. Now, mind you, this is not about dogma. This is not about theology. You know, you know, you know this is not becoming to this great diversity to proselytize my, my, my faith and my belief. What I'm challenging you to see is that your world is much bigger than just you. It ain't just about you. If you are the only one benefiting from your life, you have a problem. So, courage. Character and for Kirk, contentment. Contentment, contentment. No matter who I am, no matter what's happening in my life, I'm cool. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, I'm cool. Friends, no friends. I'm cool. You got a man? You ain't got a man. You 
I had to talk to Michael because Michael was so talented. I had to let him know. Now, Michael, before we start shooting, I need to let you know that before you show up, last night I stayed behind and I pre-led the steps. So every step I take and step on, if you follow my instructions, every step you take is going to light up. Now, Michael, you're good. You're talented. You know, you know, you're good. But if you get out there and do your own thing and take a step, it ain't going to light up. So, Michael, follow my instructions. Follow the steps that I tell you to do. It's going to work out. Michael said, okay. That's how you talk. The music starts.
and closing remarks by Vice Chancellor Elber Bennett. Thank you. Mr. Franklin, would you please come forward? Good afternoon. On behalf of the 2014 Youth Motivational Task Force Committee, Office of Career Services, and the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, we appreciate you with a small token. Thank you. Pleasure to recognize our lovely guests for today. We have 37 consultants from private sectors, government agencies, and educational institutions. Will all consultants please stand at this time? We greatly appreciate you all for coming this year. We also would like to recognize everyone that is on stage with us today, Chancellor Alexander, Mr. Bennett, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, Dr. Jacqueline McCray, Interim Vice Chancellor for Advanced Affairs, Ms. Pauline Thomas, Vice Chancellor for Fiscal Affairs, Mr. James Tyson, Vice Chancellor for Institutional Advancement and Development, our Miss University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, Alexis Cole. YMTF co-chairs, Ms. Felicia Wiley. Ms. Bobby Sweat and Mr. Ricky Peer. Ms. Shirley Cherry, Director of Computer Therapy. Ms. Ernestine Lawson, coordinator of YMTF and all Career Services staff members. Can you please stand? We also want to recognize our student escorts and participants for YMTF this year. Can you all please stand? Thank you. We also want to recognize all high school and junior high school students that are with us today. We have Jack Roby. Representatives, please stand. Christus Health, Eaton, Monsanto, USDA, Sam's Club, AT&T, and Miss Bobby Sweat. This personal announcement is for the students. YMTF, Real Talk, Truth and Consequences. It's today at 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. in Caldwell Hall, Phillips Lecture Hall. All students, all students, please be in attendance. This is something that you all do not want to miss, okay? All other announcements are printed in your program, and thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Franklin. I participated in quite a few Youth Motivation Task Force assemblies. And this is one of the few times that our audience has been spelled by. 99% of you stayed, and I certainly appreciate that. Give yourself a hand, please. You know, those of us that watch BET and, and watch all of the, the I guess, the programs on TV, we always knew that Mr. Franklin was a very talented entertainer. But what he did today was unbelievable. I, yeah. 
being, being the old Baptist deacon, I could barely hold my peace. You know? and, and, and it's just amazing of what he shared with you. Those words of wisdom will go a long way. And I just want to thank everybody for participating in this program. And hopefully, and, and, and take this back to your schools, churches, communities, back home, back to your classroom, back to your boardrooms, and let's make a difference in the lives of young people. There are two other events on the program. Let's, let's be a good audience for the alma mater and the retirement of the colors, please. Hey, hey.